Creating and Managing Cases To record the details of an incident and link digital evidence to it, you can create a case and then share the case with other investigators within or outside of your organization. There are two ways to open a new case. The first way is right from the home page where we have a button to create a case just above the My Activities section. The other way is to navigate to the search page and click on the Create a Case button on the right side above the list of search results. This button will still be present even if you have the filter set to search only for files. Once the case has been created, click on the pencil icon next to the case name to change it to something relevant and recognizable. The owner field cannot be modified as you are automatically made the case owner. If you have a reference number for a case, you can enter that in the record number. To associate this case with an external reference number, add that number in the incident number field. When adding a new case, the status will automatically be set to active. This can be changed to closed and reopened later on if needed. Choose the case category next. Each case can only be associated with one category. The category is the type of incident, such as employee theft or shoplifting. Categories are assigned retention periods, which affect how long to keep files as evidence on the service. Files associated with the case may be affected by the retention period set for the case category. The department is the group within your organization that is responsible for the case. This is a mandatory field and you may only choose one department per case. You'll need to select the starting date and time the case incident occurred on. You can use the calendar and clock icons to quickly choose a date and time. If the incident has an end date and time, this can be selected as well. Enter a description for the case, giving as much detail as possible so others can quickly find the case they're searching for. Below the description are the tags, which are one-word keywords used during the search process to find cases. We recommend entering any synonyms or alternate wording for the case that might be used when someone is searching for the incident. For example, if you're creating a case for a theft, you can enter the words stealing and shoplifting in the keywords, since someone may use those phrases while looking for the case. To enter a tag, type in the word and hit enter to add it to the tags list. You can keep adding words and hitting enter until finished. Click on the X next to a word to remove it from the tags list. The location field is used to specify where the incident took place. You can add the location by typing in the address or clicking on the map icon to bring up a map where you can select the location. If you know the general location, you can type that in the location field and then hit the map icon to select a more specific location. Use the mouse wheel or the plus and minus icons to zoom in and out, and left click and drag to move the map around. You can also enter an address from the map pop-up using the field on the top left. Clicking on the map will set the location pointer. Once you have the pin in the right place, you can click Set Location to save it. Below the location, you can see the geographic coordinates of the pin that was placed on the map, and the address will update accordingly. At this point, you'll need to assign users and user groups to share the case with. Any users in the department that was selected will automatically be assigned to the case once it is saved. If you wish to add additional users or manage the permissions, you can do so from the Users section. Click on the plus icon on the top of the list and choose the Add Users option. From the pop-up window, select as many of the existing users or groups as you would like and click on the Add button on the bottom. The search on top can be used to find a specific user or group by name, officer ID, or email address. If no results are found, you'll be asked if you want to invite this person as a guest. Take a look at the video on sharing cases and guest users for more information. For regular users or groups, they'll need to be created in the configuration section before they can be added to a case. Once a user is in the permissions list, their permission level can be modified. A user or a group can have the view only, view and download, edit, or manage permission. View only allows them to just see the case, 
View and download will let them see it and download evidence. Edit will allow them to make changes, but they cannot share the case with others, and the Manage Permission level grants them full access to view, edit, and share the case. At least one user or group must have the Manage Permission level for each case. You can remove users and groups from the permissions list by clicking on the X on the right side of the permission list. This section of the case also includes the File Request tab. In smaller browser windows, this may show up as a drop-down menu in the Permissions tab. If you need information on setting up file requests, please see the video on requesting external files for cases. The last step in case creation is to add files to the case. Either click on the plus icon next to the File section header and choose the file from your drive or one that has already been uploaded, or drag and drop the file from your drive into this section. Folders can also be created to help manage the evidence and keep things organized. Take a look at the video on adding files to cases for more information on everything that can be done in this section of the case. If you need to edit any of the details of a case, either select a recent case from the My Activities section of the home page, or click on the case in the results list of the search section. From the Edit screen, you can close or reopen a case using the button on the top right. You cannot modify details of a closed case. You must reopen the case first. Only users with the Manage Permission level are allowed to reopen cases. Next to the Close or Reopen Case button is a menu where you can view the audit trail for the case to see if anything has been changed, or delete the case if it is no longer required. You can also copy the case, transfer it to another system, or create a case summary or e-discovery receipt report from this menu. Also next to the Close Case button is a Subscribe option in case you want to be notified when there are changes made to the case. Below the last modified information, there's a checkbox which can be enabled in order to protect the case from being deleted. You can only put a check in this box while editing an existing case, not during the case creation process. If this box is not checked and a case is deleted by accident, you can restore the case from the recycle bin. Look at the Retention Policies tab of the Configurations section to see how long cases and files are kept in the recycle bin. When cases are created, users and user groups that have been added as part of a department are granted the default permission level that has been assigned to them within that department. If you need to change a user or user group's permission level, go to the User section in the case. From the list of users, you can click on the X next to a user, group, or service to remove it, or use the drop-down menu to change the permissions for that entity. You must have the Manage permission for the case in order to make changes to the user permissions. Let's take a quick look at an example of a case concerning an employee theft incident. This case will be assigned to the Loss Prevention Department, so let's take a look in that department to see which users and groups have been assigned to it. From the list of users, we can also see what permission levels they will have for any new cases that are added. Now we'll go into the Cases section, create a new case, and fill out the details. We'll call this case Employee Stealing from Warehouse in Mall, give it a record number for our own case logging system, and we'll also include the incident number that the police have given it. Under the category, we'll choose Employee Theft, and we'll choose the Loss Prevention Department as we had looked at previously. Using the calendar and clock icons, we can set the date and time that the theft took place, and give it an appropriate description. Under the tags, I want to add a few that someone might use to search for this case, such as theft, storage, store, and associate. This way, if someone searches for a theft by a store associate, the case will still be shown. Next, we will choose the location of the warehouse where the theft took place, and on the bottom we can drag and drop a screenshot of the employee in the warehouse from the security camera.
In case there's someone who's not in the loss prevention department that I want to be part of this case, I can add them in the users section. Once we click on save, we can see all the users and user groups from the loss prevention department are added automatically with their appropriate permission level. Since I created the case and I'm the owner of it, I have been added to the user list as well with full manage access to the case. We can see the user I added is listed here as well with the permission level that I granted them while creating the case. Anyone with the managed permission can add or remove users or user groups even if they're not part of the department or change their permission levels for this particular case.